How Executives Can Help Employees Adopt SharePoint and Office 365 To improve SharePoint and Office 365 adoption, executives from every department should actively contribute to the efforts. Simple regular steps from the leadership can help motivate, inspire, and reward everyone in the company to start and continue using the platforms. In this short video, Richard Harbridge, CTO at 2 to lead shares some proven practical strategies. To watch the full hour video course on how to improve SharePoint and Office 365 adoption, click the link below to go to visualsp.com. Now for the hard one, which is leadership perception. Um, and this is really, uh, it could also be framed as organizational perception. Um, how do we do this stuff? So the first thing that I hear all the time is, well, it's up to users, right? We believe in a grassroots approach, and we think that if we, it goes back to the, almost the same thing IT was saying, if we just give them the technology, we give them the capability, it's up to them to better their situation. And uh, we've already mentioned that this is not the right approach, but let's, let's uh, for the sake of context here, let's talk about what does it mean from a, a leadership perspective. So leaders can make a decision on whether or not to use something. Now, IT sometimes is a leader in this, and they can say, we're no longer going to use these, this file share. It's going to be set to read only. And that way, hey, now we're going to use OneDrive or SharePoint. Um, but there's a, an action at some point that needs to be taken uh, where it's, let's stop using this. Let's remove this alternative as an option. Let's be really clear from a leadership perspective that we do not encourage, recommend, or support uh, this tool. This is an unsanctioned tool and an unsanctioned usage. And if you do it, um, you know, you are not uh, doing things best practice wise or the way we'd like you to. And here's why, right? And of course, there's the other piece to this, which is um, driving leadership from an exemplary perspective and other things. But mandating usage and removing alternatives is absolutely something that leadership can do. And so, so sometimes you have to make that step, right? You just have to take that step. Another thing leadership can do that IT or an individual often can't on their own is incorporate it into things like new hire orientations or annual training or skills validation. So finding ways to take um, technology, uh, you know, awareness, um, understanding, uh, to take that technology skill and just help people improve it. Um, and track their improvement, that's really relevant. Uh, you know, making sure that people have the basic understanding, not just of here's the internet site in the new hire orientation, go use this, but actually saying, hey, when you use the internet site, there's also this Yammer groups and this and that. And by the way, um, here's a pre-recorded uh, training session we highly recommend you watch. And then what we'd like to do is have you answer a couple of key questions about, you know, when to use what technology, you know, when should I use Outlook versus this, et cetera, in our organization, what we would encourage you to use, right? Now, again, does it mean that the every new hire is going to start using all those tools? No, because they still have to change their behavior, but at least it's setting the right precedent uh, in the beginning of the process, or it's setting the right precedent on a uh, fiscal or uh, the appropriate scheduling cycle that, hey, this is a priority for our organization, right? Technology enablement uh, and being effective employees uh, in this modern world, in this digital workplace, that's important to us. And here's the kinds of investments we're making it from a leadership perspective. Another question that I get, uh, and this is a perception that's often very confusing, is people say, well, we really want to identify champions, or we really want to have more champions, but it's really hard to find them in the first place. Um, or, you know, we want to do a champion program, but our culture, our people, we just don't have the kind of people that would make sense for that. We don't have the budget for it, those types of things. So champion programs are... Um, the most cost-effective way to improve adoption. There's no question about it uh, because you're basically getting free support from the organization in return for really, really, really basic enablement. Uh, you're basically helping them with escalation. You're giving them maybe some uh, train-the-trainer type material and other things like that and self-service. And, and that's really uh, the champion program's sort of basic foundational level. So when you're trying to identify champions, if that's the concern, there are many, many ways to do that. You could look at, like I mentioned earlier, IT has the ability to do a lot of analysis of usage and analysis on um, how people are using the technology. So that can help you identify who maybe the better uh, or more active users are. And those could be potentially good champions. Um, you could also do things like, um, there used to be this technique, it's not as true today, um, but at one point uh, in organizations when um, the only browser that was out of the box or the one that was enabled by default was the Internet Explorer experience, those who installed Firefox or Chrome or Safari, etc., um, they actually were a good indicator of someone who's taken extra effort to improve their personal productivity at the workplace, right? So they've, they've gone over and above. Now, I'm not saying that one of those browsers is better. I'm just saying that they've 
shown clear evidence that they've taken action to try and improve their experience, which suggests that they're willing to either experiment or understand other tools that could help them be better from a productivity perspective. So sometimes looking at those who have installed these types of uh, browsers historically has been a technique we've used. In a modern day world, we look at apps uh, a lot of times. So if you have managed devices, what apps have they installed? Who's installed like some of the Office apps? Who's installed you know OneDrive app, etc.? And those people tend to be people that may have taken a little bit more than just the basics uh, and they're trying to understand how to improve that experience and so again enabling those people might be a good way of doing it you can of course find these people through surveys and polls uh, interviews you can look at for polls those who've responded uh, to, you know literally to questions like would you like to be a champion to those who've answered that they feel like they're an expert at certain things uh, and sort of self-selection bias is applied there but it can be an effective way of potentially finding new candidates um, and that brings me to the last point, which is champion programs uh, are programs. They run over a period of time, and it's important for those to actually have cycling of champions. So some people who have been a champion for a long time shouldn't be, uh, at least shouldn't be a champion without extra steps being taken, right? Either recertification or, or something else. So doing a champion program where you say you are a 2017 champion, a fiscal champion, or um, a quarterly champion or whatever, and doing that type of model can help because it helps identify and it makes it that much easier when you say you're still a champion, you're a former champion, or you're a champion to us, but we're not going to prioritize the same level of engagement and involvement with you. I know that's really sticky for some organizations. It's a hard subject, but it's important because you want to bring in new champions. Your champion uh, group should continue to grow over time, not stay the same for months and months or at least quarters and quarters. And the second thing you, you do want to do is you do want to encourage a little bit of that because there is an expectation, right? If champions are expected to do certain things, there's a reasonable expectation that at some point, uh, sooner or later, that people might not want to be champions anymore. And that's okay, right? They still get all the praise as being a champion in the past, etc. They're a former champion, however you want to do it. But you do want to get those people out so that you can not overwhelm them or annoy them with all the champion communication that's targeted to them versus, say, the broader organization. Um, okay, so that's that. Another one that we often hear is, well, we're leaders and we get feedback from users all sorts of times. So we do polls, we do surveys, and we collect feedback. Um, but the question here is, do you actually take action on the feedback and do you share what action was taken? Not just share the results, because a lot of people are pretty good at sharing results of feedback, but they don't necessarily share you know, the process that went into making the feedback decisions or what feedback wasn't acted on and why, right, um, is another good example. And you can do this at the individual level or more importantly, you can do it at an organizational or a group or departmental level where you share broader and you say, look, here's what we learned and here's why we took this action or we didn't take this action. Um, so people feel like the feedback cycle is self-fulfilling, that there's value in me sharing my feedback, etc. So again, uh, take feedback and make it really focus on what comes out of it because feedback just for the sake of saying, hey, we got feedback is pretty much irrelevant, right? You really want to have clear action. If you would like to automate training and support for your team, install Visual SP, the plug-and-play, instant, and context-sensitive self-help system for SharePoint and Office 365 end-users. Over 2 million users in over 200 companies are using Visual SP to boost end-user adoption and reduce the burden on their IT support teams. Using Visual SP's step-by-step -step intuitive guidance tools, let your colleagues get access to help wherever and whenever they need it, Facilitate employee onboarding with always accessible tip sheets, annotated screenshots, step-by-step -step walkthroughs, and screen capture videos. Accelerate user adoption of your business workflows and improve productivity. To request a free demo and see how Visual SP works, click the link below to go to visualsp.com.